Can I take this? Yeah, take the mic. Okay. okay. Hello, children. Hello. Here is this morning's story. Are you ready? Then we'll begin. The butcher's apron. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Emma Gibson. And I'm Nadine Monon. And together we are the butcher's apron. So who are we? We're literally just two mates who like radio. There's not much more to it. <laughs> um, but we, we're interested in making our own content, our own radio and our own podcast and giving people a voice really where the BBC might not care to. Um, so we met ages ago, we both do other things. I make art and I'm a cultural researcher. And I make books and other things like that. Uh, and we have two main reasons for starting The Butcher's Apron. One, we love radio, but not much of what we loved was actually made in this country. And because all the best stories were the ones we told down the pub and retold again and again. And we wondered where they lived, what was their legacy. Um, so we started out with a plan, it's pretty shoddy, <laughs> to make a podcast and use some of the connections that we've made along the way. We've learned a lot about storytelling and we're going to share it with you in six easy lessons. Number one, know the tools of your trade. So don't record your radio show on your iPhones, no matter what, you know, no matter what the, uh, the reviews say. So when we started out, we had no idea what we were doing. We recorded all of our interviews on our iPhones, shaky hands, and roped in our partners, our friends, and other people who just hung around um, to give us a hand to get going. So a cautionary tale from this early period is that very famous people will say yes to interviews and you should be prepared when they do. Um, we had to panic order spyware from the internet when um, <laughs> Professor A.C. Grayling agreed to a phone interview, and I hid under a duvet in my flat, trying to cancel out the ambient noise of the, the train track and like barking dogs and stuff. So here are the results of that debacle. Hello, is this Professor Grayling? It is indeed. Hello, this is Nadine from The Butcher's Apron. Thank you for speaking with us. It's a great pleasure. Um, why were you moved to make The Good Book? Well, a very long time ago. Um, more it literally yeah. can't hear yeah. there's, no point, there's no point in playing you any more of that because it's, you can't... You can't hear it. Um, so you can see how important it is with such amazing conversations going on to know how to capture them properly. Uh, and now this did get better. It did get better. Um, and we have since spoken to some uh, of our real life heroes and told some great stories from Kit Williams, who made The Masquerade, Turner Prize winner uh, Jeremy Deller, Poet Laureate Carol Ann Duffy. Um, I mean, too wait. many. Yeah, stop. too many to mention. So um, <laughs> I'm just going to stop trying to mention them. Um, they've all been successfully captured, but not without some other difficulties, which brings us to lesson two. Always get permission. Yeah. Um, so in the early days, we were wild and free, and we got in trouble a lot. Um, we got kicked out of the Greenwich Observatory on our first show. Um, we got trapped in the Dianetics Centre for Scientology yeah. on Tottenham Court Road. Do not ever go in there. Bad. Ever. <laughs> you yeah. took a they long time to get out. But worst of all, we got nearly sued twice by this guy. So he is the infamous Bishop Sean Manchester. He specialises in exorcisms um, and he has a bit of a reputation for never giving interviews without issues. Um, so we thought he'd be perfect. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, we're going to play you our first ever encounter with him. Um, I am actually the Right Reverend Sean Manchester, Bishop of Glastonbury, uh, Primate of the Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ or Ecclesia Apostolica Jesu Christi, which is an English Catholic jurisdiction. Is this for um, an, uh, an actual radio station, or, or is it for a podcast, or what exact? A podcast. And is, is it yourself I'll be talking to? Yes. I am, as you might appreciate, um, a traditionalist, a traditional Christian, and um, I hold to the old ways and the old order of things. And um, But I don't stand on ceremony. It's just that um, when I have had contemptuous interviewers, they have fallen foul of Ofcom. 
What a nice guy. Yeah, note, note the skull. Yeah, that's the real one, he yeah. says. Yeah. Um, so even though we did get permission to use his interview in a podcast, we might have accidentally interviewed his arch rival as well, which made him really cross. Yeah. Um, so after 17 emails, three edits, two threats of legal action, <laughs> and our refusal to change the show anymore, he went away, but we still worry about it. I, I, all the like, Every day I worry about this. Um, but we put the episode out anyway, um, and this made us realise that the way you tell a story um, can be really powerful. So yeah. on to lesson number three. So a picture, I mean, this, this is a cliche, but it's true. So a picture is worth a thousand words. It's not good enough to get the best story. You have to present it in the best way. And our, those previous two examples were, you know, bad examples. Don't do that. Um, by virtue of this medium in radio, you have this amazing opportunity to get right into people's heads. It's a really intimate space. So make the most of it. Paint the picture. Um, to illustrate... <laughs> we are going to <laughs> we are going to share uh, a clip of raw audio from our communion show. Um, this is the promo shot depicting our heads floating in space, eating communion wafers, obviously. Um, so this clip is of Dr. David Barrett explaining what he misses about his old religious faith. And this clip is what the audio sounds like before any sound craft. So have a listen. If I'm walking through a town on November evening, and I pass by a church, and it's lit up inside, I can hear an even song inside. That still tugs at me now. Somebody singing, the choir singing, or just people singing a hymn uh, through the, the lit church windows on a misty November evening. That tugs at me, uh, even though I don't share the beliefs anymore. So, you know, that's kind of moving, but... Um this same clip with a bit of soundcraft, a bit of, you know, some, some dead air where, there, where it's necessary, has a totally different feel. So if you will, please could you close your eyes and listen to what the same piece of audio sounds like when, after we've gone to work on it. If I'm walking through a town on a November evening and I pass by a church, and it's lit up inside, I can hear an even song inside. That still tugs at me now. Somebody singing, the choir singing, or just people singing a hymn uh, through the, the lit church windows on a misty November evening. That tugs at me, uh, even though I don't share the beliefs anymore. So that layering of soundcraft makes kind of a, a mundane report. It kind of lifts it. It allows you to get involved in the person telling the story. Um, and that all happened when we started to work with proper producers and we built a team up and we stopped trying to do everything ourselves, which brings us to lesson number four. Stick to what you're good at. So we learned um, halfway through our journey to be a specialist and work with specialists. So we built a team of editors, producers, sound curators, radio nerds, and they all actually told us the same thing. But the best bits of our shows are when we just spoke and went on our own little investigative missions, um, unscripted in vibrant living colour. Um, we might have taken this a little bit too far when we decided to do a show on hunger. Um, I was the first woman in Britain to attempt to eat the biggest breakfast in the UK. Um, and Nadine, so gross. Nadine starved herself for three days. Um, so we're going to show you the promo video that we made for that show. Really gross. That's nine pounds of food, just so if you ever want to eat that. 
<laughs> you get it free if you finish it. Which um, I didn't. No one does. Um, but this leads us to lesson number five. Which is always bite off more than you can chew. Um, so rising to the occasion is a great way to learn things. And this is exactly what happened when Selfridges commissioned us for their Festival of Imagination. They asked us to capture and broadcast all the amazing speakers they had lined up for the festival in a show that was itself amazing. And we said, fantastic. That's what we do. That's what we do. And we ha actually had never done that. Never, never no. done it. So, um, <laughs> so this is what happened, yeah. anyway. <laughs> it's just a couple of minutes. Audio is the most visual form of art, precisely because you can't see it. Like reading, I guess, or, um, reading. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I start? Yeah, go. Imagination. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Imagination. You can do it if you believe you can. I won. We formed the butcher's apron on a whim about two years ago. By we, accident, maybe. Yeah. We specialize in unexpected adventures in audio. Come with me and you'll be in a world of... We've been commissioned by Selfridges to produce six shows for the Festival of Imagination. For the start of 2014, Selfridges is becoming um, a portal into the creative mind. We came in Selfridges in the middle of the night and we watched a lot of big burly men drag lumps of what looked like would never become anything into a pile in the middle of a stark white room. So it was going to be a caravan, then it was going to be something else, and something else. Um, we, just, we landed on this idea of, of a shed. And now we're, uh, we're making radio from it. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, as you can see, we've come a really long way. So last lesson um, is that the story, your story is the best one. So have fun. It's the thing we've learned more than anything, is that the thing you tell your kids about all of this in the future um, has to stand up against all the stories that you tell on the radio. So we do have fun, and we take our family everywhere with us, willing or not, um, and the results are happy lives for us. This is us at Latitude Festival. We just made their official podcast last month. Um, it was one really good example of this, um, and we did... Um, we ha I'm going to play a sneak preview. Yeah, go. I'm going to do it, because yeah. I know we're running over a little bit. Um, and then you all go and download it on the 1st of September. Good. OK, so this is what it sounds like, and all the sound in it is from the festival itself. And that's why it works with the carrot, because the carrot conducts, but there's more resistance in the... the right, shall we okay. get into yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love that style. Hello, my name's John Ronson. Hi, I'm Bob and Roberta Smith. My name is Luke Kennard. My name is Viv Albertine. Yes! You're listening to The Butcher's Apron. At Latitude. 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 The Butcher's Apron at Latitude. I'd like to point out that that's a funny mirror. It's not. That's a normal mirror. My child doesn't uh, look like that. <laughs> in real but that's life. it. That's our story. Thanks for listening. Search us on the internet. We've got a studio in Stoke Newton. If you want to make radio with us, come and say hello. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.